Welcome to another tutorial of a deep learning course. Today we will be talking about meta-learning, or also often referred to as learning to learn. Because our goal in this setting is how can we actually learn a network so it can quickly adapt to a new task. The term task is here often a bit more general, so it can be, for instance, a new classification task. We can get new classes, we can get also a completely different task in reinforcement learning setting, where an agent, for instance, should then learn to work with a new uh, agent itself. So therefore, meta-learning is quite a broad topic. There is, of course, a high demand of such models that can learn to learn or just can very quickly adapt, especially also in uh, application, because you can imagine that there are a lot of companies that don't want to pay a high price for always relabeling data for different settings, etc. And if we have very little data, can we still use a model that can really go quickly to a new setting? We talk about now limited data. We have seen before in our tutorials that we often use like larger data sets of about 10,000 images uh, per class. But here we will be talking about very few examples of, for instance, only four images per class. And that is very few data, but obviously just training from scratch is not enough at all. And we instead need to have a model that can easily transfer from one task to another. This is also slightly different from standard transfer learning, where we just pre-train a model, because there we are not expecting it to just need, for instance, four examples. So here we specifically try to uh, learn a model that can very quickly adapt to these very few examples. In this tutorial, we will be discussing about the main or the uh, very popular algorithms for meta-learning, which are prototypical networks, also referred to as protonets, MAML, so model agnostic meta-learning, and the final one is proto-MAML, which kind of combines the prototypical networks with MAML. All of them we will uh, try to implement and apply to the setting of few-shot learning from uh, new classes. So as I said, meta-learning can be very broad, but just as an example in this tutorial, we will be going through image classification, but you can easily adapt it also to natural language processing, to reinforcement learning, and, and uh, even more settings. When we talk about a new image classification, let's take, for instance, here this small setup. So during training, we will then have data sets of a certain number of classes, but during testing, we will see a completely new set of classes. And we therefore want to learn a classification then on this new uh, set of classes. So during the training, we might want to learn then a network that also simulates the setup of a test data set, meaning that we, for instance, have given here four images of cats, four images of birds, and from this we want to learn what would be now a novel image. So if we get now another image, can we easily classify it into cats and birds? The same we would do then with flowers and bikes, uh, and again try to classify the new sets. These two sets are actually then also referred to as different names, namely this set here of our training set would be called support set, meaning that this is the set of images that we want to, that we are given with the labels to optimize our model on, and then the set on which we evaluate our model is called the query set. So for those we uh, for instance, during testing, might not have labels, but instead have given them novel images. So in inference, when we really don't have any labels for a lot of data, then this would be here in our query set. During training, you can already imagine how we will perform the training, namely that we will use the support set, we will try to optimize our model locally to this classification set, and calculate the loss based on this classification on the query set. And then this loss will be used to update our model and therefore optimize along the way that we can do very well from a few examples all these different classifications of between cats and birds, flower and bikes, and also maybe cat and bikes, etc. Um, and therefore learn to adapt very quickly to a new set of classes. We will then now uh, take a closer look at how we can actually implement it and what the different techniques are for meta learning. Let's first start again with importing our standard libraries. As usual, we will be using 
Fight of Lightning, and also we will provide down here uh, pre-trained models that you can just download and therefore have uh, don't have to wait for your models to train. Of course, feel free to train these models also yourself. As said before, we will be now talking about few shot classification. So we have given really just few images to uh, adapt to a new class set. Um, and here we will be using the dataset Cypher 100. Uh, that is one we have seen already in our transformer tutorial. Namely, it is the Cypher 10 dataset just with 100 classes. And each of these class has 600 images, again of the same resolution of 32 times 32 pixels. To now get from this one a dataset on which we can perform training, validation and test set, we will split it over classes instead of images because we want to learn new classes. Right? We don't want to just learn our classification over the 100 classes, but we will be training now on a set of 80 classes and try to check on the validation if we can adapt to 10 novel classes, unseen classes and the same when in the test data set. So let's first prepare the data set by downloading both the training and the test set of Cypher 100. We can also take a short look at the data set. So in general, it has the same motives as Cypher 10, just with more uh, detailed class selections. In the data pro uh, pre-processing, we of course now have to first take the data set and split it over classes. So let's first do that. Um, and thereby you see up here, we actually concatenate the training and the test set together because we are now creating our new training and test set. We uh, just create here a new dataset class um, just to basically take our Cypher 10 dataset and easily uh, apply it to our dataset. Now let's in the next cell, we basically take our 100 classes and randomly shuffle them and split them over the training, validation and test class set. So you can see here the first 80 classes of this random permutation go into the training, the next 10 will go into the validation and the final 10 will go in the test set. Let's also maybe shortly look at what um, validation and test classes we have to expect. So for instance, in the validation, we will be then comparing caterpillars against buses, motorcycles, keyboards. So you see we have a, a variety of classes that we have to distinguish in between, but also we have then classes that are closer to each other. So we have a couple of animal classes, but also for instance, bus and motorcycle, um, and also very different ones like a keyboard. And the test set has again, 10 different classes. So again, new ones that we haven't seen before and would need to quickly learn and uh, see how we can uh, classify these 10 classes. The next, um, cells will really just prepare this data set. So using these 10 or using this 100 class split up, we will now create our data sets into a training and a test. We use again simple data augmentation, just uh, a little bit for virtualization purposes um, and have now given a training validation test set that is split it over these classes, right, as you can see. Now that we have discussed um, how we can prepare first the data. Another big part of meta learning is actually how do you prepare to sample these uh, new batches? Because we have said before in each iteration kind of, we now take a support set. So we believe for each class that we want to uh, distinguish it between, we'll get a small set of uh, pictures on which we will then fine tune our model. And then we have given a small set basically of the same classes, just different images, which will be called the query set, on which we try to evaluate then our fine-tuned model to calculate the loss. So you can already see we now need a different um, sampling technique than before, because we can just um, sample a random batch of images. We might get different number of classes, different number of images per class, and so on. So we uh, need to define here a sampler in PyTorch, which basically uh, allows us to use the standard data loadings, but we will uh, be able to still get the images that we actually want to. So what we want to get out is then always batches that provide us with a support set, and a query set, 
and we defined the sampler based on two main parts, namely n way and k shot. n way is basically saying how many number of classes do I want to have in each batch. So, for instance, in the example up here, uh, in the very initial one, we would have two classes per batch, right? Because we always have them given, for instance, cats and birds, so we distinguish between flowers and bikes. But you can also imagine that we have a four way classification of cats, birds, flowers, and bikes. And during testing and validation, because we have 10 classes, these 10 classes here, we would do a 10 way classification. So we would have 10 classes to distinguish between. The K shot is then the other uh, side of a coin, namely that how many images do we provide per class? So again, in the example uh, in the introduction, we had four uh, images per class, but we can also vary that. So uh, you can already see this training can be also adapted to what we expect during testing. So if, for instance, during testing, we expect that we have uh, 16 images per class, then it might make sense to do the same here during training. But if we expect to only have very few, like four images per class, then we should also do that here. The implementation below is, um, looks maybe a bit complicated, but it really does nothing else than prepares the data. So it can return a batch with both a support and query set that has a fixed number of classes and fixed number of images per class. Now we can also just create this um, data set or these data loaders, because you can see we just use the PyTorch data data loader use our data set and um, pass this few-shot batch sampler as a function argument of batch sampler. Um, in the cell, we now define that for our training, we use a five-way classification with four shots, uh, meaning that we expect kind of four images per class and we always distinguish between five classes. And this is done for both the training and the validation here. Um, what we do in this batch sampling is we basically return instead of two batches, we return one, uh, one big batch that combines both the support and query set. So we define here a function that basically takes our uh, a batch of images and labels and then just uh, splits them into a query and a support set, which we will use then during training and validation. Finally, let's also look at how does it actually look like. Uh, in our setting when we now, for instance, just sample a new batch. So you see that this is, for instance, a support set and this is the query set of this, support, uh, of this batch that we randomly sampled. The support set, you can already see what five classes we have to expect. We have here, for instance, buildings, a motorcycle and the an ape. And then the query set has the exact same classes as we see, just different images. So we will use the support set to find you in our model and you've evaluated on the query set to calculate the loss. This brings us now basically to conclude um, the setting of how we prepare the data and we can now start to actually look into the first uh, network or the first meta-learning architecture, namely prototypical networks.